when I was a teenager with aspirations of becoming an actor, there was one place that seemed to be the epicenter of all these dreams becoming a reality. The jewel in the crown in the British film industry. And that place is Pinewood Studios. For more than 75 years now, this place has been producing some of the biggest and best films ever made. More importantly, it produced the films I grew up watching. Here in the green and leafy home county of Buckinghamshire, a mountain of movie heritage awaits. Norman Wisdom films, Doctor in the House series, Carry On films, the whole Bond franchise, in fact, the whole British film history. In one great canister of a studio, which is Pinewood. I've worked here a couple of times myself, so I'm going to show you and discover the essential Britishness of it. There's no doubt that Pinewood is brimful of movie heritage, but there's a well-kept secret here too. For at the heart of these studios is a piece of British history, one which you've probably seen several times before. The most filmed country house in all of Britain, Heatherton Hall, here at Pinewood Studios, every single bit of it and its grounds have been in a film over the last 75 years of its history. There's three large tents for the girls, one for me, one for Miss Haggard. Get a load of that! Whoa! <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Soper. Are we all loaded? Not half. <laughs> the name Heatherden Hall is all but forgotten these days, but it's been a star of the silver screen since Charles Boot and J. Arthur Rank set about creating Pinewood Studios in 1935. Heatherden's English country charms provided a winning backdrop and lent Pinewood a glamour which American studios could only dream about. Pinewood's founders simply picked up where Heatherden Hall left off. And during the 1920s, this place had been a country retreat for politicians and diplomats. But during the Great Depression in the 1930s, the place was sold off for a song. The entire estate was bought at auction for just £35,000. The stages would all be built from scratch, but already there was a grand dining room, bedroom suites, cocktail bars, and an indoor swimming pool. From the very start, Pinewood has been no ordinary place of work, even in the movie trade. Morris. Hello, Richard. The man who has written the history of the studios. Yes. Uh, can you tell me how it got changed from Heatherden Hall to being called Pinewood? Well, it sounds very simple, but it's very true. Uh, they wanted to give it a feel of a, an American studio. They liked Hollywood. They had a look in the gardens, covered in pine trees, and so they called it Pinewood. Simple as that. I mean, what films have been filmed in front of where we're standing here now? Well, this is extraordinary. You can literally turn around on the dial of a clock, and every time you stop, you'll see something else. OK, guide me. Well, we've got Barbara Windsor and, uh, and Sid James running through the gardens in Carry On Henry. Uh, this whole sequence where we are now uh, in the garden was used at the beginning of the film from Russia with Love. And Sean Connery's been chased around by Robert Shaw. James Bond, the notorious, amazing Doctor No Secret agent, is back, and half the world is out to kill him. <laughs> as he fits his murderous talents against the Iron Curtain. The SAS film, the big thriller of the early 80s, Who Dares Wins, they're climbing up the side of the walls, they're blowing out the windows. Uh, in the corner there, you've got a shot where, in Goldfinger, you might remember Oddjob takes his hat off, yeah, yeah. and he throws it, and he decapitates a statue. And he's actually standing in Stoke Poges Golf Club when he does it, but the tight close-up shot is done in that corner over there, so by my calculation, he throws his bowler hat about nine and a half miles. This is what it's about. It's not just about filming on sound stages. It's the house, it's the gardens, it's Pinewood. It didn't seem to matter whether budgets were large or small, Producers were ever alert for an opportunity to make use of Heatherden's manicured lawn. And elegant facades. But Heatherden wasn't just a pretty face. It was a focal point for work going on at the studios. 
In the 1960s, you know, they'd sit in the restaurants, you'd have Barbara Windsor and the carry-ons on one table, you'd have Norman Wisdom on his table. Malcolm and Wise made three films here in the 1960s. They'd be there, Bond would be there. And it was in the days before trailers came in and fed actors. Everyone came in and ate together, directors, producers and actors, and there was a great atmosphere. And that's why people came to Pinewood, because of this great family atmosphere. And at the centre of any family is a home, and that home was Heatherden Hall. In the 50s and 60s, Pinewood turned that family atmosphere into a business plan, producing large numbers of low-cost films, where, just like a theatre repertory company, the same faces would gather again and again. The carry-on films were a, a little gem because of the people. I mean, they were all characters. Not only in the films were they characters, but off the set they were characters. Several years earlier, Shirley Eaton had first appeared alongside Dirk Bogard in Doctor in the House, Britain's most popular film of 1954. Over the next ten years, she became a Pinewood regular. Other M nurse. The face of the films that were taking the British traditions of music hall and radio comedy and transferring them to the big screen. feeling is why the carry-ons did so well. People needed some craziness um, and some very English boardiness. It's worth noting that 1959, the year of carry-on sergeant, the very first in the series, finished with an extraordinary statistic. The top 12 box office films in Britain were all actually made in Britain, something never since repeated and now almost inconceivable. The carry-ons were like a great mirror poking fun at post-war Britain, from national service to the newly formed NHS and even the crumbling empire, there was barely an institution that didn't get lampooned. The audiences couldn't get enough and filming carried on all year round, rain or shine. Why are you leading me to this? industrial dumping yard here. Busy part of the studios now, of course, with all these uh, hangers full of materials and stuff for films, but over 40 years ago, it was just a bit of field at the back of the studios yeah. where they filmed the eponymous and iconic Carry On Camping, that famous sequence where Barbara Windsor becomes unattached to her bikini top. Begin. And fling and in. It was November of 1968, they were making Carry On Camping for the next spring and summer film release, so they had to come out here at that time of year. It was very muddy, it was very wet, they had to paint the grass green, they had to paint the leaves on the trees because there weren't any, to make it look like it was summer. The actors, when they rehearsed, they'd wear mink coats, but of course when it came to the shot, everything had to come off, and the case of Barbara Moore came off than perhaps she'd anticipated. Fling and in, and fling <laughs> and... <laughs> Matron, take them away! By the 1960s, Pinewood had built up a stable of very bankable British movie brands. It was time to go international and to expand the site itself. So these are the original stages uh -huh. and the original production offices here. We started off in 1936. We're just going to turn into uh, Goldfinger Avenue. This road was used partly on car chase in Goldfinger. Oh, 
It's virtually impossible to visit Pinewood today without paying homage to Bond. It must surely rank as one of Britain's greatest exports of the last 50 years. It even boasts its own 007 stage, all 59,000 square feet of it. <laughs> this enormous stage has not only hosted Bond's most ambitious scenes, it's also regularly been loaned out to some of the biggest blockbusters in cinema history, helping to turn Pinewood from a quintessentially British cottage industry into a truly international player. My only chance of being in a Bond film, I think, Tony, yeah, is on the Bond stage. <laughs> it's, it's on the Bond stage in your buggy. Amongst all the huge sets and special effects stages that inhabit the Pinewood of today, for me, the soul of the studios is still to be found at the centre of the old estate. As a country house, Heatherton Hall might not be brimful of great paintings and Chippendale furniture. The old masters here are the slapstick comedies, the send-ups and the action sequences that have entertained and enlightened generations of us Brits. So many moments of love and laughter, a remarkable contribution to our cultural heritage. What I absolutely love is the quirky seriousness of making movies alongside an incredible Britishness that pervades the whole of Pinewood Studios. At the grand press opening here in 1935, some toff was overheard saying, it's, it's as if a millionaire of the beautiful house has allowed movie making to go on in the back garden. And it's been going on here ever since.